Good morning. Uh, I don't know where you are, so good whatever, wherever you are. Welcome back to Ultimate Studios, Inc. and the Recording Ninja Workshops. Today, I am joined by a good buddy of mine, Brian Hacksaw-Williams. How you doing, brother? Doing well, buddy. Good awesome. to see you again. Today is Tracking Rock Part 4. We're doing vocals, and I'm super excited about this because I've worked with Brian a long time. He's the original singer on this track. He's also one hell of a vocal coach. So we're going to get a really good lesson on working the mic, and then we'll briefly go over some gear. But today is really going to be more about this side of things and how to get a good take as a vocalist. So if you're a vocalist, you're going to learn something today. If you're an engineer, you're going to learn something today that you can use with the next vocalist. I use his techniques with almost everyone that I work with when I need to help a vocalist out. So you're going to get some good stuff. If you haven't seen the other parts one, two, and three, don't go watch them now. Wait till we're done. When we're done, go watch one, two, and three. Abel slaying the drums. We got Minnow killing it on bass. And Ernesto, we got two weeks of guitar with him. So we're going to finish off some vocals today. Be sure to go to recordingninjaworkshops.com. Sign up for the mailing list. I want to hear from you guys. You know, we're going to be sending out some cool stuff coming up soon. So hit the mailing list and stay in touch. But anyway, without further ado, let's get going. So I'm, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to turn this over to you. Sounds good. Because we all know. I mean, I'm an amazing vocalist. I yes, really am. He's a fine vocalist. Yeah. I'm so good that even my shower shuts off when I'm oh singing. Oh, my God. That's not, that's not nice. <laughs> so I'm going to let Brian walk through some stuff, and then we'll talk about gear in a minute, okay? Sounds good. All right. It's all Alrighty. yours, brother. Talk about a few overall kind of things about recording vocals. Number one, um, there's a little speech I like to uh, call, music is not the Olympics. And by that, I mean uh, the percentage of people out there that are not – uh, into technical music playing, the percentage of people who care about your technical skills is small. The reason music has stood the test of time is because of its ability to move the hearts of men and women. And so what we're talking about is passion and portraying emotion. So when you're recording, you know, you want to have a good performance and you want the notes to be correct. But the most important thing is that you're able to portray emotion and move the hearts of your listeners. That's why people buy records. The most important thing is going to be um, uh, your, your headspace in terms of how you're hearing the music and how you're singing. Um, I often refer to it as there's, there's two worlds. There's you, there's me here, standing in this room in front of a microphone singing the song, okay? But there's also um, these headphones. It's another whole world. Uh, I think the fancy term is feedback loop. This is what you want to be listening to more than anything else. You want to be listening to how your vocal performance is sitting in with the music. So not you sitting in this microphone, you know, but how it's coming back to you through here. If, if, if you've had uh, sessions where you sing and you think you're doing well, and then you go in the control room and... Uh, uh, um, you don't like what you hear and you thought you sang it well, it's because you're paying too much attention to you in this room. You want to be in this world, the world uh, of your headphones, and listen to how your performance is sitting in with the other musicians, you know, as if you were playing it live. You're going to be listening to this, okay, and when you're listening to, to how you're coming back in the headphones, you want to try to have a consistent... Uh, Consistent spot that you're standing in. Some people tape them up. That's it doesn't matter. Just you'll know because it's kind of this. I kind of do a lot of this before I'm getting ready to sing. Kind of get my feet set. Then, you know, you don't want to go crazy moving around on the mic, but your volume is going to fluctuate. And so when I have to do something quiet, I tend to lean in on it, you know. And if I'm going to blast a big loud note, I tend to lean back and sing a little bit under the mic. You don't want to pop this thing. What what good is hitting a, a big a big note, a big part, a big section, uh, if it's too loud and you got to go back and track it again. All right, so you can fluctuate a little bit like that as, as you go, you know, uh, in forward on the quiet parts, back on the loud parts, okay? Rarely are you going to do one take of a song that goes well or that's right, you know? I think I've been singing for, 
Uh, I've been recording for, uh, geez, I don't know, about 35 years. And uh, I think I've done uh, a perfect take song uh, maybe once or twice in my life. What, you're, what you want to do, though, is you do want to kind of run through the song to, to you start feeling comfortable, you know. And then, uh, in this case, we're going to take it in pieces. Uh, not because I can't get through it or because I don't want to sing the whole song, but, and this is common, especially with today's music, there are parts that are close to each other uh, in terms of when one section ends and when the next begins. And, uh, uh, and many, many uh, songs, they actually overlap and you have to do them on separate tracks. Here, they don't completely overlap, but there's things that I want to finish out before I start the other thing. Now, live, I wouldn't do that. I'd cut it a little short to get a breath and then go in and pop the next part. But because we have the, the luxury of the studio, we're going to do this in pieces so I can finish all my phrases without worrying about a breath. Uh, um, and again, look, the bigger the pieces, the better. You know, you don't, you know, you don't, when you're, when you're a singer and when you're producing a singer, you want to, you know, keep their confidence up. So you don't want to sit there and have to have them punch in words, you know, or, or pieces of words, <laughs> which is, you know, then you just, you can just see the vocal is crumbling as their confidence is crumbling. You know, you wanted to have nice big pieces, you know, have them sing the whole song. I mean, another great technique is to have them sing the song several times, you know, and then go through it and, and find the uh, uh, the best sections and try to piece them together and then go back and punch whatever's left that you don't have good takes of. Oh, a little bit about headphones. Um, some people like effects on their uh, on on their vocals as they hear them being played back. I don't, I don't, and I don't recommend it because um, I want to know the truth, and the truth, you know, the truth will set you free. <laughs> and you know, you you've got to, um, you want to hear it as clean as possible, because then you'll know whether it's right or not. Uh, um, so I like myself to be loud, about as loud as it would be live. I want to hear the band. I like it. my headphones pretty loud in general, and I like to be, me to be, you know, a slight bit louder than the rest of the band. I definitely want to hear me on top of it all, but I want it to feel as close to live as possible, because, again, I want to create, recreate the excitement of when we do these songs live. Because uh, that's what it's all about, you know, is capturing that excitement. So uh, we'll give this a shot. We'll take it in, take it in some pieces. A little song called No Class. I'm going to move back over here. I'm going to join you for one second. Okay. Now, our environment right here. This is actually really common for here at the studio. We do have an ISO booth that we use sometimes that is really tight and sounds great for vocals. But I do find more often than not, when we're just doing vocals, vocalists don't like to be in something too small or too confined. Yes. So what we do is we kind of build a little fort. We've got our, you guys have probably seen these before. We've got our good old Oralex panels on, on mic stands. And we basically, we just make a little fort around the back side of the mic. The reason why it's behind the singer is we're using, in this case, we have an AT4047. It's a cardioid microphone. Its best rejection is on the back side. I don't need to worry as much about what's over here. The wall is far enough away. We're not going to get any slap back or anything from the vocals. But the microphone is seeing all of this. It's seeing the rest of the room. Even with your head right there, it's still seeing around this area. So what we're trying to do is make dry this area up, but still not have it too tight for the vocalist so he's not like, oh, my God, there's, there's a wall around yeah, me. It's yes. still comfortable, but it tightens the vocal up. If we want super, super, super tight, we may put a few more of these up or move the ISO. But I would say nine times out of ten, this very simple – little you know singer's fort works really really well you don't have some of these panels use blankets you know hang them over some mic stands or whatever you have just just to kill the reflection and i just don't want to hear what's going on behind the room because there's a good 15 feet before the wall that is all just room sound and in this case i'm not interested in any of that room sound i don't want to hear <laughs> yeah. it so that's our setup out here and you know brian has said he's already set up his own headphone mix and whatnot so yeah. Yeah, at ISO booths, you know, uh, um, gosh, so many of them are so hot and sweaty and uncomfortable and stuff. It's nice when you have the luxury to do so, to be in a nice big room. Because right. it makes you feel more open and free and all those other things. Yep, relaxing. All right, let's go do a quick gear talk. I'm going to move the camera one more time to the side. Let's run through our gear, which isn't a whole lot. Okay. So our setup <laughs> is we've got the Audio Technica AT4047 coming into the Trident. I am using a little compression from the TX5C. My 
there's more than one way to skin this cat for sure. And every time is a little bit different. Brian is really easy to record. Dynamically, he's pretty consistent. So my compression is containment more than anything. I'm not trying to over squash this at all right now. I'm gonna just make it sit as best I can. Then when we go to mix, we can always apply more. So my attack on this is fast. I'm like five milliseconds. The release is actually about 10, a touch slower. Sometimes I'll just put them both to as fast as they can. But with this compressor, I like, I like it a little slower. I'm at a six to one, and you're only gonna see maybe two lights come on, which is about three dB of compression, maybe four, because these lights are every, let's see, we've got one, three, and six. So it's three or four dB of compression. The Tone Lux, this is why this is one of my favorite compressors, is you can hit it hard with just about anything and you don't have a lot of crazy artifacts. I've gone way harder than what we're gonna do today. I mean, where I am smashing a vocal coming in. Mm. Especially if I have a vocal that's all over the place. When I do that, I'm reaching first for my Tone Lux and I may actually go Tone Lux and Day King just to even things out a little bit because this compressor is very forgiving. It's just freaking awesome. Today, you're not gonna see the lights. They're not gonna be on all the time. It's really just some of the loud notes. I wanna just contain things yeah. and smooth it out. I am not EQing whatsoever. Not a huge fan of EQing at tracking time. More likely than not, I'm gonna change the microphone. Today, we know this one works with Brian. It's a good one for this track. So this is what we're gonna use, but if it was something where it wasn't bright enough, I may pick out a different mic or if we needed more focus, I may get the Shure SM7B or the Heil PR30 or something like that. Or if we wanted really open, I may pull out the Audio-Technica 4050. Mm. You know, so it'd be nice and open. But this is kind of a nice combination of focus mid-range. It's a condenser, but it's not overly bright. So it's actually pretty good for rock. Touch of compression and the rest of it is in Brian's hands. Should we just dive into this sucker? Let's go, man. Okay, what we'll we're figure gonna do is we're gonna take it from the top and yep. well we'll go from there got it she said we never last so i started working fast she said you got no class i said honey this too shall pass Those of you that are singers out there, you know, the breath is the unit of singing. Breath equals phrase. It just says, and, and a well-done song is a series of well-executed breaths. People that tell me they have trouble with breathing, I'm like, you don't have a trouble with breathing. You have a, a problem with phrasing. Right. You know, so it, 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 I call it, it's a strategy I call little victories. I'm I, every, every phrase is one breath, and I, and I know as I take that breath in, because you know how your mind works a lot faster than I can speak what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Well, in the moment that I'm taking a breath in, I, I quickly are visualizing this, this breath starts here, ends there, has this shape with the notes. And that goes for how I'm going to do the tone, what the pitches are, all those things. And then as I take my next breath, the next one drops down, drops right into place. And that's, and that's kind of how you do it. Right. Yep. And that comes with practice, too. You just got to think about it. Yep. You know, yep. like if anything, it's no you know, guitar or whatever. Visualization. You know? Yep. All right, let's go grab second verse. Mm -hmm. Again, this is how I, I, if we're piecing together, I usually try to stay in the same headspace and get similar pieces, because especially as you get on a roll, if you're doing maybe multiple takes, we're only doing a few takes because of the broadcast. But if we were going to do this multiple times, we may do three or four passes of the first verse and go, okay, we're in that headspace. We got it now. Let's go get the second verse. And then we re restart for our chorus and do the same thing. So let me, let me pull you up over at the second verse. Okay. Crap. 
Dang it, I should have done the pre-chorus, too. <laughs> That's all right. I'll punch you in. I was so happy with my verse. I just, uh, yeah. All right, here we go. I'll punch you in on the, uh, on the pre-chorus. pre-chorus. You here got we it. go. Right. I tried to throw her a phone. She cried out, baby. And, you know, that's the other thing is sometimes you just got to punch in. You know, you get excited and you go, ah, oh, crap, I'm still supposed yeah. to sing. He'll tell you I do it all the time. <laughs> I was, oh, yeah, oh, I'm supposed to keep going. All uh, right, yeah, okay, sure. But now that we have our, our verses, we're going to go back, let's get our choruses. And then yeah. we'll go back and get the bridge last. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But she's going to spend the night. She said we never Now, that is a perfect example of, on this particular tune, why we are doing two separate tracks is yep. because he's, that second verse comes in, boom, right yeah. away. Yeah. You know. And, you know, you wouldn't do that live. You know, that's not a deal breaker because, you know, sometimes people do too much of that, you know, about the, about the crossing over. And it really makes it tar- hard to recreate that live. But, I mean, if I was live, I'd just be like, uh, I said, baby, I like yours. Something's wrong. Yep. I mean, I would just actually still do that all in one breath. I right. would do that last line all the way through something's wrong. I mean, that would even work in this. It just, it, we could. We liked the arrangement when we originally did this. Yep. By the way, this song was originally written for a – TV show. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah. They needed some bar rock. Yeah. So we got together rock. and yeah. threw some tunes together. It had so much fun doing it. We ended up doing an entire album called yep. King Crazy Hero. But yep. All right. Let's go get our second chorus. All right. So much she's gonna spend the Nice. Very nice. Yeah. All right. We're getting a piece together rather well here. My headphones <laughs> up a little bit. Now, let's get our last chorus, the big yeah. one. Yeah, big finish. Mm. Oh, wait. We do the, uh, we do the, the wind up into it? You want to do the bridge first? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me get you in on we'll the save bridge. Save the big finish so it is the big finish. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take you from the end of that chorus. Yep, yep. All right. You ready? Mm. In a moment. Water, yeah. water, water, water. I'm just telling you because um, people are like, oh, what do you like to have in the studio? And you're like, tea with lemon or honey. or Listen, it's this, this. It's uh, slightly cooler than room temperature, so it's refreshing. You don't want it to be cold. But, I mean, this is uh, your body's made of like 90% this. So this is all I use. This is spinach to my Popeye. <laughs> nice. I'm stealing that, but I'll have to rephrase it. <laughs> hey, that's good enough. No one will believe that no. I'm singing. <laughs> All right, bridge time. Here we go. Baby, I like you. Yes, I do. Something smells, smells to me. That is now what you'll hear arrangement wise is he's reaching up and it's it feels just gonna feel like the whole thing is scooping up into that that last chorus. Yeah. Okay, so that was the one time I actually broke the we went from chorus to bridge and then we're back to the chorus. Yeah. But yeah. in this case though, it's gonna help, actually. It really kinda is because this big finish, uh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's yeah, it's a big finish. 
you kind of want to do it on its own. I mean, um, you know, rock and roll singing always comes down to money notes. This is probably what he's saying. When you're learning a song or someone else's song or you're getting ready to sing a song, you know, have in your mind what is going to be the highest things that you have to do, what are the most difficult things that you have to do, and, and be mentally prepared for that so that nothing comes up and surprises you. I always talk about, you know, the, the money note in a song is always going to be three things. Number one, it's probably the hardest thing you have to do. Number two, it's probably going to be the emotional pinnacle of the song, which it is in this song. And uh, number three, it's going to be the one thing that everybody else is going to hope you screw up because the other singers are jerks. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, Bill McDonald says, uh, great job, great control. Oh, thank you. Now he's going to get a big head. Now he's going to be like, Yeah, now watch, I'll screw this ending. I'm going to have to get like cube <laughs> ham for him or something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no green M&Ms. So. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Big finish, Holmes. I tell the same. that finish <laughs> yeah you might want to you're not actually that loud when you're doing that no you want to yeah, explain yeah. that okay well yeah um i mean this is another looks and uh soon uh uh, uh my, my website along with the great kalen chase which is going to be called i believe oh, he's a good one he's good my buddy he's out there being a big rock star now um it's going to be i think it's going to be called aggressive vocal styles we're not sure yet aggressive vocal styles extreme vocals something like that uh um and yeah, um, I call that the leak. Uh, the leak is kind of a technique where um, uh, it has the same air pressure. Uh, well, if I try to explain how to do the leak, it's basically this. If you were to go, ha, right, then stop your voice, ha, okay, then, then stop it and open the door a little bit. That's why the leak, ha, you know, and, and if you want to get a little close, you could go, ha, or ha, ha, ha. So, <laughs> see what I mean? It's it's the same. All the people, the people have all these different names. Like, oh, it's the death growl. It's this and that. No, it's the same trick. It's just you just change the pitch, and uh, uh, um, and I manipulate it with my mouth. Sort of, I get mouth resonance on it. Uh, um, and yeah, and I use that a lot uh, uh, now that I'm 92 years old. Um, <laughs> Uh, a lot of times, you know, when I want something screamy, it's like I'm too lazy to hit a higher note, so I just go and do the scream instead. No, but it's really cool because people that don't know anything about singing, they think it's really difficult. And once you kind of get a hold of how to do that, it's uh, um, it's really pretty easy because like you heard, um, because I'm leaking air, right? I'm, it, it, I can do it. I could do one of those screams about three to four times longer than I could hold a note singing. Uh, um, but simply because I'm, when I do that scream, um, the air is coming out so much slower. So I can sit there and go, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> I could never sing a note that long. Bill asks if anything's dripping from that uh, pop screen. <laughs> Not yet. As a, it's a joke. That's a good one. Let me tell you, give it time. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we do have someone asked if we're going to double anything. We are going to double something. Now, uh, sometimes doubling is the best thing to do. We're going to double the chorus on this on this one just to, yep. to have it so we can lift things up a little bit. Yeah, I would just say uh, I'm still on. Right. OK, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, doubling is great. Um, always take I mean, you guys probably know this, but uh, always take doubling over using some kind of chorus. Because it'll have a chorusy effect, uh, 
pro- pro- hopefully not too much, if there's not too much variation. But it kind of gives it this natural chorusy feel. And it makes it fatter. Um, some people do it too much. I mean, you want to use it in the places where you want it to be fatter. That just kind of makes sense. Uh, and that's why I try not to use it too much, but usually like on big choruses or big finishes, uh, I want to double because uh, it's just, it gives it a natural chorusy feeling. Uh, um, it makes it fatter without it being too effecty. I guess right. if that's the word I yeah. would use. Yeah. Yeah, because if you double everything, then you really don't have anything doubled. Then you've doubled nothing. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know. So, more than one way to do it. But let's, so I have you, I'll control the level. Sure. I'm going to have to make an adjustment because we're live yeah. on the level of the double. But I'm going to pull it down a little bit and I'll pull it back up as he's going so you can yeah. hear it. And I would say to the singers too, this is doubling. This is not like one of my little freakish things. It's like. That is the best example of your feedback loop because as I'm singing with myself, I'm trying to make sure that there's no, or that that there's hardly any variation at all. I'm trying to make it match exactly, you know. And sometimes I'll even have to listen back to how I did something mm-hmm. so I can make sure that I'm matching up exactly. But it's really that's when you can really feel that you're matching up perfectly when you can hear that in your head that like there is no, or very little wave going on in there. Uh, let me know if they're too much or too little. Okay. So. Sure. But she's gonna spend the night. She said we never last. So I started working fast. She said you got no class. I said, baby, I like you. Something's wrong. I took her home. Is that cool? Not too bad, All dude. All right, cool. I had it kind of loud so you can kind of hear what's going on there. but Yeah. No, if you can actually turn the other me up. Okay. I mean, I, I, thought, I'd, I thought it was matching up pretty well. It'd be good to hear a little more of the other me. So much she's going to spend the Now, one thing I would say on this is vocalist doubling can be a challenge sometimes, you know, especially when you're trying to sing to yourself. So practicing that, like anything else, practice singing with yourself so you can really get your timing of things down. Oh, yeah. In fact, I would tell you this. I mean, the best practice is uh, sing somebody else's song with them and, and, and when and try to mimic them, mimic their style. And and because that'll that, I mean that's because you know he'll tell you one of my things is I'm a great mimic I'm a good ape, mm-hmm. and so uh, um, I practice singing with other people's voices and try to match them completely. When you're matching completely, your voice will literally almost vanish from what you're hearing, and that's what you want to do. When I mean that's the best way to practice doubling. Double yourself first, you know, and then if you want to make it more challenging, try mimicking somebody else's vocals so precisely that that sounds doubled also. Yeah. Yep. It's a good little workout for that. Bill, no, no pitch change. Uh, at, what you're hearing, everything, I mean, everything on this track is all raw tracking. There's there's no pitch stuff. There's no reverbs. There's no nothing on the drums, guitars, bass, and the vocals. So this this doubling is just, I have them honestly a little louder than I probably would yeah. come mix time. But sure. it's just, it's both Brian's vocals, nothing going on. You want to do the big uh, last chorus? Yeah, yeah, if I can remember what I did, yes. (laughs) All right. I'll punch you in right there. Thank you. I got the lyrics in front of me, and still. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. So I started working fast. She said you got no class. So I started working fast. She said you got no class. So I started working fast. She said we never.
What, you don't want to get the big laugh? Oh, no, I do. I just, you know, that was, if you you could see my face, that was me going, oh, <laughs> what's next? Okay, yeah. All right, you want me to punch you in on the money note? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just, just the one. Get me before the baby I like yours, they repeated that part. Okay. Working fast. She said we'd never lie. I punched you a little early, but we got it. No, no, yeah. And what's cool is I did that first line right. I the first of those I did. So you got me in right where I began to screw up. So that was yeah, that worked out well. We're good. Lucky. <laughs> Sometimes it's that way. That helps. Well, Brian, dude, thank you my, as always. My pleasure. Awesome to have you back in here, yeah. you guys. Thanks for joining us. We are. Uh, we're gonna do a mixing one of these in a couple weeks. We're actually gonna break it in pieces because it's gonna be. Uh, there's a couple different things I want to talk about. But we've pretty much finished. We've got most of our track done, so I'm looking forward to actually getting a mix in this one. All right, you got so, it. Thanks, dude. You Appreciate bet. it, brother. My pleasure. See you guys next week. See ya.